October 3rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Psalms chapters 113 and 114 from the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. Praise you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May the Lord's name be praised now and forevermore. From east to west, the Lord's name is deserving of praise. The Lord is exalted over all the nations. His splendor reaches beyond the sky. Who can compare to the Lord our God, who sits on a high throne? He bends down to look at the sky and the earth. He raises the poor from the dirt and lifts up the needy from the garbage pile, that he might seat him with princes, with the princes of his people. He makes the barren women of the family a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. When Israel left Egypt, when the family of Jacob left a foreign nation behind, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his kingdom. The sea looked and fled, the Jordan River turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why do you flee, O sea? Why do you turn back, O Jordan River? Why do you skip like rams, O mountains, like lambs, O hills? Tremble, O earth, before the Lord, before the God of Jacob, who turned a rock into a pool of water, a hard rock into springs of water. God, it's interesting to know that starting with Psalm 113, for the next five psalms, those were psalms that a lot of times were sang at festivals uh, in the Jewish faith and probably were some of the songs that were sang at the Last Supper with Jesus, which is kind of cool. But as I got to thinking about these and what what people were really saying in them, that they were praising you for all these things that you had done and your power and which is all true I got to thinking historically since we have known you meaning since we have record of you in our lives because you existed long before that you were always this way you were always sovereign grace filled merciful um, righteous just all the adjectives that you can think to describe you you were all those things and we know the Bible says that you'll never change and based upon everything we we saw in the Bible and everything we can see between the Bible and our lives and then everything in our lives we can see you're the same <laughs> you haven't changed you are still exactly who you say you are but the part that baffles me is here these people are looking back and they're looking back on this big sweeping history of their forefathers um, and going, oh my gosh, God, you were so amazing to do all those things. But yet the people who were in the middle of all those things, what did they do? Well, we know they whined a lot <laughs> and complained and fussed and even a few of them got so agitated that they killed because of it. They weren't worshiping and praising you. They were complaining about the situation they were in. Yet future generations looked back and said, oh my gosh, I can see the big picture. God was totally taking care of you. But these people aren't doing it for their own lives. It's going to take future generations like me to look back on the stories of the people in the Bible and go, oh my gosh, God, you were just amazing in those situations. And how easy it is to Monday morning armchair quarterback what happened in the Bible, right? We weren't there in those moments or those days or those years experiencing what people did because you have allowed us through the Bible to see kind of the big picture, at least those couple thousand years, the big picture of what was happening. And so it's really easy for us to go, oh yeah, God is consistent. God is, is filled with love. God um, cares for us. God has grace. God has mercy. It's really easy for us to say that. Yet here we are in our own lives and we're fussing and whining just like the people did way back when, when the nation of Israel was called to be your people. We whine and we fuss because our five minutes of agitation, our couple days, maybe our couple months or even our couple years seem so overwhelming and so overbearing as one of my friends put it so sweetly. She said, uh, it, it feels like a cement umbrella. Yeah, that was a great way to put it. I, I would agree with her. 
but people will look back on our lives because they'll be able to see this big sweeping um, story of our lives and how all the pieces connect and go, oh my gosh, God, you were so amazing, so consistent, so grace-filled, so kind, so merciful. God, why? Well, I guess I shouldn't even ask why. It's because we're so selfish. It's because we're so wrapped up in, in our world that we can't see five minutes past this desperation that we have. That, that we honestly, even though you've saved us, not just saved us for eternal life, but saved us from situations over and over and over again, we honestly think that the next situation we're in, suddenly you're not going to save us. You're not going to see us through. You're not going to be there for us. Yet we have this incredible history of all these people and all these situations where you did, without question. I don't know, God we are very selfish people. I can only speak for me. I'm a very selfish person. And I get into those situ situations sometimes. I'm like, yeah, praise God. Look what he did for Israel. Praise God. Look what he did uh, for all of these other countries and nations and, and people along the way in the Bible. How awesome is that? But when it comes to my own life, I'm sure critical <laughs> of what you're doing. God, help us to have a bigger vision. We don't need to know your vision. We just need to understand that you have a bigger vision for our lives. That just because the pieces that we have in our life right now aren't connecting for us, and even to the point they might be feeling like they physically and emotionally are so incredibly painful, that certainly doesn't mean that you don't know what's going on. It certainly doesn't mean that there's not a bigger picture where all the pieces do fit. And once the pieces do fit, then it's not painful. It's part of a big picture that you have, not only for our lives, but the lives of all the other people you've made. God, help us to quit being so incredibly tiny in our thought process, so incredibly selfish in our thought process, and realize always, not just for past generations, but always, that you have our best interest at heart and that you love us. As someone who who loves us, you don't want to see us in pain. But sometimes we have to go through that pain to get to the bigger things that you have for us. God, allow us to think bigger and trust in your sovereignty and trust in your love that you have shown in my life and consistently for thousands and thousands of years in so many other people's lives. I thank you that I serve a God who is consistent and never changing because everything else in my life seems to always change. Allow me to remember that you never change, God. You're always the amazing God that I know you are. In your son's name I pray, amen.